Hey guys, Gore here. Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a follow-up to the Helicopter Basics Guide where we touch on more advanced tactics and tips when operating a chopper and squad. If you haven't seen the Basics Guide yet and are new to flying, I highly recommend watching it first. I'll leave a link to the video in the description below. If you enjoyed today's video, leave it a like and subscribe for more future squad content. And if you're watching this within a few hours of release, I'm live streaming squad over on Twitch right now. Come on by for a bit or just to say hello. Now, let's get into the guide. When it comes to the physical mechanics for flying choppers, there aren't really any advanced methods, only mastery of the basics. As you get more time behind the stick, work on becoming more comfortable with low altitude flight. Get a feeling for how you need to manipulate your collective, pitch, and roll in order to skim along the surface of any battlefield. Additionally, practicing and becoming more comfortable with low altitude landings can up your proficiency and survivability massively. Spending less time getting to the ground will allow you to get out of dodge in an instant and avoid being closed down by enemies. Also, don't forget that you can change the training range to any map. So if you're having trouble with a certain map or want to try some more high risk landings, jump into the training range and iron things out. To do this, simply hit your tilde key located above your tab key and type in admin change layer, space, and then whichever map you want to fly on. Now moving in to the tactics and tips. As a helicopter, you are the fastest vehicle in the game and thus can get a head start on just about anything you could think of. At the start of each game, you have several options available to you depending on your team and the map you're playing. The first and simplest way to use your heli early game is back capping. This is everyone's least favorite thing to do, but failing to do so can lose your team the game before it's even gotten a chance to start. Either load up some infantry and drop one off at a flag and continue elsewhere or land your bird and jump out. I personally like to do this when my team is pretty radio silent during the staging and it feels like they're going to need as much help as they can get. Additionally, this is a great option to prevent full squads from sitting on the back caps and allow them to push mid-map. The next option you have is early game scouting. For this, you need to keep in mind that all vehicles can and likely will be in play, meaning be prepared at any moment to evade fire and get out of dodge. What you're looking for is where enemy lodges are stopping to build fobs and the location and direction of travel of enemy vehicles. This information will allow your team to react more efficiently and not run into situations where they're blindsided by a threat they were unaware of. The next and most common option is the rush. Loading up a full infantry squad and getting to a point of interest somewhere on the map. Getting this early foothold on an area that the flags often come to can give your team a massive leg up on your enemies. Just remember, the further you travel past the midline of the map, the more likely you're going to come under fire and possibly lose your bird and all aboard. Take justifiable risks, but don't get so ballsy to the point that you start your team off 20 tickets down. The last option you have is establishing a tow fob. In the right spot and armed with enough ammo, a single tow can turn the battlefield into a cemetery of enemy vehicles. A great example of this would be placing a tow on the southern mountain range of Kohat that overlooks much of the center of the map. A few things to take note of when taking this option. For one, you're going to need either squad members or another squad in your bird to leave at the fob and operate the tow. Tows eat ammo like none other, so while you're doing other duties as a pilot, ensure you're checking up on the ammo count of the fob so when a threat does cross its path, it can be engaged and destroyed. Lastly, the initial and secondary supply runs for the tow fob are crucial. A tow costs 600 build to place and 500 ammo to reload, so you want to focus on maximizing the number of shots it can take. Take the Blackhawk for example. Instead of bringing the default 600 build, 400 ammo, and not having the 500 ammo cost of one tow shot, you can carry 1k build supply for the initial setup of the tow fob. This allows for extra ammo crates, sandbags, or other emplacements to be placed while you do the second supply run with 1000 ammo, allowing the tow to have two shots at their disposal. One of the most influential things you can do as a pilot is transporting troops. As we've already talked about the early game pushes, we'll focus on the mid and late game. To start, let's take a look at attack situations as these are what a majority of your transporting will be for. In these instances, the more the merrier. The more infantry you can pack into your bird, the more likely they won't get stomped soon after touching down. Yes, this does run a bigger risk, so use your best judgment. If no attack fobs have been set up, then you should assume enemy infantry are roaming everywhere and looking for something to shoot at. To maximize your chance of a successful landing and increase the odds of your occupants surviving after being dropped, landing a further distance from the objective is advised. 
The distance will depend on the map and where you're attacking, but typically this will be anywhere from 300 to 500 meters out. No matter the distance, the LZ you choose should be in a flanking position. If you don't know where a flanking position would be, take a look at the map. If you're attacking along the line that connects the objectives, the enemy will be expecting you. Try to position elsewhere, and also take note of where enemy logistics would approach from that are coming from main. You don't want enemies stumbling across your new attack fob. Now in situations where there's already one or more attack fobs set up, you can do one of two things. You can reinforce one of these angles of attack with the troops you carry, or you can establish a new angle of attack. You have to make that decision after you assess the situation. In game modes where you have a defense in addition to an attack objective, you need to know when to deny pickup for a squad. As many of us know, defenders in this game get bored and want to go attack with the rest of the team. Don't enable them. Keep them well supplied and encourage the defending squad leaders to help you set up backup defense fobs so that when they do receive contact, they'll have options if their main spawn goes down. When it comes to transporting troops in the late game, all the previous principles apply, but there's an added layer of caution that you need to take. Losing a bird full of infantry late game can spell defeat for your team, so if you know it's going to come down to the wire, steer clear. There's no indicator of when you reach the late game, but my rule of thumb is sub 100 tickets. While resupplying friendlies is one of the best things you can do in a chopper, there are some situations where you want to steer clear. By far the biggest one is when friendlies are using a logi to set up a new attack fob. At this point, they are otherwise unknown to the enemy team, so bringing your chopper overhead throws up a huge, hey, we're over here, signal to the enemy team. You're the loudest and easiest vehicle in the game to spot, so don't put yourself in positions where you can harm your team by drawing attention. Now you have two options in these situations. You can either A, stay away and continue resupplying other fobs and whatnot, or B, you can be a bit more aggressive and help the squad that's attacking the objective. For the most part, squad players, especially those who have had no action on the defense point, will chase any opportunity to shoot something. You can use this to your advantage. Let's say your team is attacking Neva Radio Tower on Gordok, and a friendly squad has managed to sneak in a fob into the train tracks just south. Take your bird on an overhead pass of the point to draw attention. Keep in mind if vehicles or emplacements have been identified and alter your course accordingly. Land on or by the peninsula to the northwest and stay for 10 to 20 seconds. This will lead to the defenders thinking they're being attacked from one side and will draw them out of the point or at least draw their attention to the opposite direction of your friendlies. There are occasions in squad when your team desperately needs a new fob but has been unsuccessful due to too many threats nearby. This maneuver is incredibly risky but with that said it can pay off big time for your team. To place a radio, your chopper needs to be no more than 30 meters away from the SL that is attempting to do so. Most times as a chopper, you hover above the target area or land close enough. Neither of those are going to work in this situation, so what you can do is a high speed, low altitude flyover. You need to communicate to the squad leader that will be placing the radio that he needs to be Johnny on the spot because they'll have a second or less to react. If you manage to pull this off, you can either identify an area within the radius where it's safe enough to drop supplies, or your team can try to get a Lodgy in close enough. This again is by no means the go-to move, but if it's between you possibly losing your chopper and your team losing the objective, go big or go home. A large part of being a successful pilot is establishing and maintaining good communication with your fellow squad leaders. Passing accurate information to and from will put your team in the best position to win the game. Two situations that will save you a lot of hair by communicating ahead of time is one, when an SL is having you come in so he can drop a radio, communicate to him that he needs to be in position before you come in for a hover or landing so you don't spend 30 seconds or more in a danger area and end up dying. And two, when you're coming in to pick up a squad, communicate to the squad leader ahead of time that his squad needs to be all in one place so you don't have to spend an excessive amount of time on the ground waiting for each member to come running back to the bird. The less time you have to spend on the ground, the less likely any enemies will have time to react to your presence and move to engage. Most times in squad, saving tickets and not putting assets into dangerous positions is the name of the game. There are, however, some instances where it's worth you sacrificing your bird for the betterment of the team. This instance typically comes in the form of your team desperately needing a spawn point or supplies for the attacker defense post haste or they risk losing the objective. At the end of the day, the loss of 6 tickets will be far outweighed by the gain of 60 or the loss prevention from surrendering an objective to the enemy team. 
Additionally, when an objective has just been captured and the new attack point appears, you sometimes have a small window of opportunity where no enemies have fallen back or set up a spawn for their new defense. Scout these areas first, and if you deem it safe and have infantry already on board, go for a landing. You can at times ensure victory for your team by getting up a spawn point before the enemies know what hit them. While helis and squad are incredibly proficient at traversing the battlefield, you're going to run into plenty of situations where you have more requests being made than you can fulfill. When these scenarios arise, you need to assess each and prioritize which is of the highest importance. My rule of thumb is defense wins games. If your defenders need ammo, bring it to them. If their fob is down and they need a new one pronto, communicate with one of the defense SLs and figure out where to meet them. Out of play squads also have a high priority. If they're sitting on a now inactive objective after your team captured the attack point, pick them up and either move them to the new defense or get them established for the attack. On every chopper in the game, there are two door mounted machine guns. These can be a good bit of fun for those who haven't ridden in helis too often, but in practice, they leave much to be desired. The difficulty of getting multiple rounds on target accompanied by the window of opportunity being small to engage targets, using your bird as a cast helo is not advisable. Things like transporting troops, running supplies, and scouting are much more useful to your team. That said, there is one scenario when using these door guns can be effective, and that's when bullying a lodgy. Whether it's RTB or out and about, you can oftentimes shoot out tires or occupants and slow down the infantry and supplies from getting to their end destination. Let's take a look at some of the things pertaining to when you're using your chopper for spotting enemy targets. There are several different ways to act as a spotter while in your bird. You can do flyovers at low, mid, or high altitudes, or you can remain more static at high altitudes and act almost as a UAV for your team. When it comes to doing flyovers, ensure that when you spot an enemy target, you call it out, mark it on the map, and then steer clear of it. You shouldn't be making pass after pass over an enemy fob or vehicle because eventually they're gonna get a good shot off and take your bird down. If you do need to stay in the area to keep vehicle marks updated or whatnot, position yourself directly above the Vic. They won't be able to look directly above themselves, so you put yourself in an area that they have no ability to hit you. To make the act of marking targets easier, make sure you have one of your SL marks bound to a hotkey so that instead of using the command wheel, you can use a single key to place marks on the map. If you've been flying for a decent amount of time, you've likely had rounds where you're waiting at the helipad for your bird to respawn more than you're actually flying around. Good vehicle crews and tow positions can make mincemeat of even the most skilled pilots. One way to circumvent losing your heli too often due to being in too far advanced positions is setting up a forward resupply point. This will allow you to continue ferrying supplies forward to your team, but allow the logistics trucks to take the supplies to the final stretch. There's no one position where these can be set up. It's best just to find an area where you feel comfortable landing is unlikely you'll be shot at and is close enough to friendlies to make the resupply point worth its effort. The last tip I have for you is a quick and simple one. Use your A and D key to rotate your chopper back and forth as you drop supplies while hovering if enemies are nearby. This will give any surrounding infantry a much harder time hitting enough shots on your tail rotor to disable it. Before I send you guys off, I wanted to leave you with one last thing. Don't forget to have some fun. If your team already has the win in the bag, shake things up a bit, try something new, or share some laughs. With a red dot. I got him! 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 Oh! Oh! You guys see that body? Woo! Anyways, that's all I've got for you today. I hope pilots of all skill levels were able to take one or more things away from this video. If you did enjoy the video and learned something new, leave it a like and subscribe for more future squad content. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'm out.